Hey, I'm Whoops, and I'm going to teach you how to play Dragoon and Endwalker. This guide is going to assume you've gotten to level 90, because I'm not going to go through the trouble of going through every single level where things change very slightly every few levels. I'm sorry. If you're leveling, you're just going to have to use your best judgment and fill in the gaps where you can. If you ever have any extra questions, feel free to shoot me a tweet or just come ask me in my stream sometime. All right, let's go. If you just want the opener and some advanced tips, you can skip to this timestamp right here. We're going to start on the assumption that you're fighting a single enemy. We'll talk about dungeoning and large monster pulls later. Dragoon has a rotation that revolves around hitting a five-part weapon skill combo. This alternates between two different variations, and we'll call them the Chaotic Spring combo and the Heavens' is Thrust combo. You may be asking yourself, but whoops, what about all the cool jumps and buffs? Well, you'll be weaving those in between this main weapon skill rotation, and we'll get to that in just a second. So, your five-part rotation alternates slightly, as I mentioned before, but you're gonna wanna start with your Chaotic Spring combo shown here. This will grant you your Power Surge buff, as well as apply your Damage Over Time debuff on the enemy, both of which you need to maintain throughout the entire encounter, if possible. So in order, that's True Thrust, Disembowel, Chaotic Spring. True Thrust will always be your first weapon skill ideally when facing a single target. Disembowel is the next step, which grants you Power Surge, which is your 10% damage buff. And then Chaotic Spring, which will apply your damage over time. Also, don't forget that Chaotic Spring is a rear positional. You want to make sure you hit that positional every time, or make sure you have True North on. After hitting Chaotic Spring in a combo, Wheeling Thrust will become available. This is a rear positional. And after hitting Wheeling Thrust, your Fangin Claw will become available and that's a flank position. Make sure you hit both of those positionals for max potency. And just like that, you finished your first Chaotic Spring rotation. Congrats. Now you gotta thrust that mother- Now it's time for your Heavens' is Thrust combo. The order for this is gonna go True Thrust- Wait a minute. That's not True Thrust anymore. What happened to it? You see, there's this cool trait that we get at level 76 that makes it so that whenever we hit a Fang and Claw after a Wheeling Thrust, or vice versa, we get Draconian Fire, which is a really roundabout way of saying, finish a melee combo, and you get- an upgraded True Thrust. It turns into Raiden Thrust. Basically, Raiden Thrust is just a fancy version of True Thrust with a little bit of extra potency. It also sharpens the first mind's focus by one. For simplicity's sake, I just call these stacks scales. Once you accumulate two scales, you'll be able to use Wormwind Thrust as an OG CD. It's basically a big line AoE where you shoot the cool double helix dragons. <sighs> Looks awesome. Okay, so back to the Heavens' is Thrust combo, right? It goes Raiden Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, Heavens is Thrust. This combo doesn't apply a buff or a dot like the other one, but it just does big ass damage. After Heavens is Thrust, you'll notice that Fang and Claw came up first this time. It's just in a different order this time, but the same positionals. Hit Wheeling Thrust afterwards. Now you are just going to alternate between those two five part combos back to back over and over and over again, making sure you don't overcap on scales using Wormwind Thrust before you get your third Raiden Thrust. If you are constantly hitting the boss and pressing your weapon skills on cooldown, your damage buff, which is Power Surge, and your dot will never fall off. Fucking wicked. Now, let's talk about buffs and the other OG CDs that Dragoon has. It is just now occurring to me that I might not have explained the difference between GCDs and OG CDs yet for the beginners here, so... GCDs, or Global Cooldowns, are those actions that you can see all sharing that same cooldown whenever you press one of them. OG CDs, or Off Global Cooldowns, all have their own individual cooldowns. You'll want to weave the OGCDs in between the GCDs for maximum effectiveness. It's important to note that you should usually only go for one or maybe two OGCDs in between any GCD. If you try to squeeze in too many OGCDs in between your GCDs, you might end up clipping your GCD, which is bad. That's a no-no. But anyways, we'll get back to the specifics of weaving GCDs and OGCDs for Dragoon later. Let's get back to the buffs for now. So, we've got three buffs on Dragoon. Lance Charge, a personal 10% damage buff that lasts for 20 seconds. This is on a 60 second cooldown. Dragon Sight, a unique buff that allows you to select one target party member of your choice. Once used, this ability grants you a 10% damage buff and your partner a 5% damage buff, each lasting for 20 seconds. This is on a two minute cooldown. Previously, this buff used to have a rather short range and you had to maintain an actual set distance from your partner to maintain the buff. But thanks to a recent change, its cast range is now 30 yalms and you no longer have that proximity requirement. Finally, we have Battle Litany, which will increase you and your party's crit rate by 10% for 15 seconds. Keep in mind, this does have a bit of a range to it, so you'll need to be within 15 yalms of your gang in order to hit them with it. Press all three of these bad boys on cooldown. As soon as they come up, they will line up perfectly with the rest of your stuff so long as you're doing it all right, which we'll get into in just a second. As kind of an addendum or a side note to that though, if there's downtime or you're in a dungeon and you're moving from one space to another and it obviously isn't a good time to press the buff because you're not going to be hitting anything with them, 
then don't press them. Just use your best judgment. And finally, we can move on to the neato part of Dragoon, the jumps. So Dragoon has four different kinds of damaging jumps which can all be used from a maximum of 20 ohms away. Spine Shatter Dive. This jump will gap close you to the target and deal damage, the least of the bunch. You can accumulate up to two charges, and these refresh every 60 seconds each. Dragon Fire Dive. This jump will also gap close you to the target, as well as deal some AoE damage around wherever you land. This is on a two minute cooldown. You may have heard how notorious these jumps are for animation locking your character. Do keep in mind that each one has a slightly different animation lock timing, and you'll need to get used to them. I'll touch more on this later when it comes to weaving. High jump, arguably your most important jump, and also the only one that will return you to where you started when you use the jump. It's on a 30 second cooldown, which is very short, so be ready to use it all the time. This jump will grant you Mirage Dive Ready as well, which obviously lets you use Mirage Dive, one of your OG CDs. When you use Mirage Dive, you'll gain what we call an eye. When you get two of these eyes, you'll be able to enter your burst phase, which is called Life of the Dragon. We'll get to that in just a bit. Another important note about Mirage Dive Ready, that buff that you get that lets you use Mirage Dive after you high jump, it lasts for 15 seconds. So you don't have to use it immediately after your high jump. You can find a good space to weave it in under buffs or in a convenient place as to not clip your GCD when weaving it in. And finally, Star Diver. This is your highest potency ability on Dragoon and also does AoE damage around the target. It's fucking sick. It's also only available when you're in your burst phase, Life of the Dragon, and let's get into that now. You may have noticed one other ability on your bar called Gearskogel. This is a very important line AoE ability that when used with zero or one eyes, the eyes that you get from Mirage Dive, does nothing but just shoot in a straight line. But when you accumulate two eyes, then use Gearskogel, you'll enter Life of the Dragon for 30 seconds, which gives you access to two additional abilities, Star Diver and Nestrand. Nestrand is simply used by pressing your Gear Skogel button. It's basically the same thing as Gear Skogel, except much higher potency and red. It has a cooldown of 10 seconds, so since your life window is always 30 seconds, you'll be able to hit three if you don't delay using them. During your life window, which is what we call it, you'll be able to fire off three Nastrons and one Star Diver. Make sure every life window you fire off all three Nastrons and one Star Diver. Otherwise, you're trolling yourself. Near the end of this video, once we have the entire kit in mind, I'll be going into some best practices and giving an opener which will make sure that everything lines up later in the fight so that your life windows always have good buffs on them. But for now, there's a few more things we need to discuss. One of those things we still need to discuss is the AoE combo. That's Doom Spike, Sonic Thrust, Coerth and Torment. This is your multi-target combo, and you'll want to use this whenever there are three or more targets to hit. This combo actually got upgraded in Endwalker to grant you your Power Surge buff, so you don't gotta worry about going back to your single target rotation to get that boost. It's now built into the AoE combo here. You'll also notice that completing an AoE combo will turn Doom Spike into Draconian Fury. That's the Draconian Fire version. This is the same thing as the True Thrust turning into Raiden Thrust. Finish the combo, press Draconian Fire ability, get two scales, two scales equals Wormwind Thrust. Nice. However, when there are only two targets for you to hit, it is actually a potency loss to use this AoE rotation. Instead, when there are only two targets, use your Chaotic Spring combo on both enemies to get that dot rolling on both of them, so long as they stay alive long enough to suffer the majority of that dot time. Just like any other encounter, for two target and three plus target encounters, make sure you're using your OG CD abilities to do maximum damage. Next up, let's talk about Life Surge. This is Dragoon's personal defensive ability, that isn't actually a defensive at all. What the fuck, Square Enix? Regardless, this is an important part of our kit. When used, your next weapon skill within 5 seconds will guaranteed crit, as well as heal you for a small portion of the damage dealt. You can accumulate 2 charges of this, and they refresh after 45 seconds each. If you're wondering what GCD you should use your life surge charges on, the short answer is Heavens is Thrust. The long answer is, prioritize using life surge on Heavens is Thrust while your buffs are active before you use them on unbuffed Heavens' Thrusts. There will also be a few times where it could be beneficial, slightly, to use Life Surge on a 5th hit Fangin' Claw or Wheeling Thrust, such as in your opener and some reopeners. And that's something you'll have to math and feel out yourself depending on the encounter and your party composition. Just remember, the main rule here is to not let your Life Surge charges overcap. Piercing Talon! This is a pretty bad skill that you often won't use, but in the event that you need to disconnect from the enemy for an extended amount of time, you can press this for a low potency ranged attack that won't break your combo now in Endwalker. It's basically a, well, shit, I ain't got anything else to do kind of button. 
Elusive Jump, the coolest ability in the damn game. When you press this button, you'll do a backflip 15 yams away from the direction your character is facing, not your camera. This can be used as a disengagement or an engagement tool, or to kill yourself in style. That's the optimal usage. Other than that, you've got your melee roll skills, which you can read for yourself, because I ain't yo daddy. And that's it, really. That's the basics of Dragoon. Alternate your five-part combo to maintain your dot and power surge. Press your buffs whenever they're up or situationally useful. Weave your jumps, mirage dives, wormwind thrusts, and life surges into your rotation. If you're fighting a group of mobs, use your AoE rotation instead, and bam, you're playing Dragoon. Look at you. All right. Now we're going to get into some advanced tips and tricks as well as an opener at the end to set up your rotation to align your highest hitting abilities with your buffs. There's a lot of little things I try to remember to play optimally, so I'm just going to rapid fire them off. If you're used to Shadowbringers Dragoon, you may remember having to delay life windows depending on specific things throughout encounters. For you newer Dragoons, delaying a life window means using Gear Skoggle before you use High Jump and Mirage Dive. This means that instead of spending your two eyes as soon as you get them, you hold onto your eyes and delay your life window until Gear Skoggle comes off cooldown again. With Lance Charge now being on a 60 second cooldown, you will now ideally delay every life window. By using Gear Skoggle before High Jump and Mirage Dive in the opener and maintaining that order throughout the fight, every odd Gear Skoggle will land immediately after a Lance Charge or all three buffs and send us into a life window. We will no longer have to think about early versus late life windows, and double life windows are a thing of the past. You'll be able to see it in action here as I do this opener and rotation, but you'll see that every single life window will have Lance Charge or Lance Charge, Dragon Sight, and Battle Litany. In these buffed life windows, with how long the buffs last, you'll want to make sure that you hit at least two Nastrons and one Star Diver underneath the buffs. Never use a naked Star Diver, and by that I mean never use a Star Diver without one of your buffs on it. Every Star Diver you use should either have a Lance Charge or all three buffs on at the same time. That's Lance Charge, Dragon Sight, and Battle Litany. It's your big hitter, so you need to ensure it's always hitting at its best. Never naked Star Dive, ever. If you just got a Wormwind Thrust proc, check immediately to see if you have any buffs coming up within the next 10 seconds. If you can get a buff up before you get your next Raiden Thrust, which would overcap your scales, it'd be worth to press that buff first and then put out the Wormwind Thrust, usually. Pressing Gear Skoggle and High Jump on absolute cooldown is probably the most important thing you can do to ensure your life windows do not drift too far away from when your buffs naturally come up. If you delay pressing these two things, sometime along down in the fight, you will enter a life window late into buffs, and you may miss some potency. When selecting your Dragon Sight partner, there are a few things you should keep in mind. Who is dealing the most damage, or who will benefit the most from the damage buff you're about to give them? Does your normal partner have a damage down, weakness, or something else preventing them from dealing damage? These questions, along with a few other considerations, are things you'll need to keep in mind as your Dragon Sight comes off of cooldown. You need to use your best judgment to find your optimal partner in every situation. Consider using a dedicated party member macro, as well as also having a backup mouse over macro to pick a partner on the fly. I will leave those macros down in the description if you want to use them. The reason we use macros for Dragon Sight is to more intuitively apply the buff to a partner compared to manually targeting them, while also preventing the possibility for delaying auto attacks during the weave window. The most commonly used macro by high-end Dragoons is a mouse over macro, allowing you to place your cursor over a party member in the party list or on their character model in order to target and apply the buff to them. Another common option, and my personal favorite, would be to make a macro targeting a specific party member in your party list. This tends to make weaving the ability easier during movement heavy mechanics, and is handy when you're in a static, where you will always tether the same person under most circumstances. A quick tip I've got for multi-target scenarios when you enter a life window. When you're about to gear Skogel and Nastrin, stand inside one target closest to you, then tab or click target a further enemy, use the gear Skogel and or Nastrin, then quickly tab back to maintain your GCD uptime. This will take some practice, but it's super satisfying to pull it off. If you have low ping, it is possible to double weave other OGCDs with jumps. I personally don't try to do this as it may cause me to clip my GCD, but it is definitely necessary at times in order to get all of your abilities out during buff windows. However, don't double weave anything with Star Diver. It has a huge animation lock. Don't do it. If you try to jump over a gap or even a corner at an angle, you will probably send yourself off some arenas, so be careful. 
I briefly mentioned it before, but want to seriously let you all know that a properly used elusive jump can be an amazing movement tool when utilized correctly. I personally find it very easy to use quickly by using legacy type movement controls. I usually hold down my right click to orient my camera, jump, then tap my backwards movement key to face me away from where my camera is looking, then hit elusive as I'm landing. Mastering the elusive jump distance and timing can provide some really slick uptime, so be sure to practice plenty so you have that 15 yaw mental image always in your mind. Also, elusive can be a simple way to place yourself right on top of the enemy when your party uses a countdown. I press elusive as the two is switching to a one with my ping, but you'll have to see what works with you without pulling the boss early or engagingly. And, on the subject of using your jumps to maintain uptime and proper positioning, while you should first and foremost use your damaging jumps to do optimal DPS at the right moments, do keep in mind that they can also be used to stick to the boss during knockback mechanics or when enemies are moving quickly around an arena. A lot of long-time Dragoon players may be wondering, how do we effectively use Life Surge and Spine Shatter Dive now that they have two charges each in Endwalker? The answer to that is generally, hold them for buff windows but do not overcap anything. Life Surge is on a 45 second cooldown, so do be sure you don't overcap these charges. For Spine Shatter Dive, in a perfect world, you'll want to use one per Lance Charge window, which is every 60 seconds. Holding both charges for a 2 minute window isn't as effective as some of you may think, as it's such a low potency jump and we don't want to waste our precious busy weave space during buff windows on an extra Spine Shatter. Now, it's important to note that, in some encounters, you may not be able to perfectly line up your charges with buff windows for whatever reason. Just remember that the most important rule of thumb is to not overcap your charges. Since we're pressing gear scoggle and high jump on cooldown with the rules of our rotation, it is possible that at the end of some encounters, the boss may die before you're able to come back around for another delayed life window. In these rare situations, it is definitely beneficial to your damage to use that high jump before your final gear scoggle to send you into an unbuffed life window right at the end of the fight. Some of you may be wondering about general guidelines when it comes to gearing up and preparing food and potions for a raid on Dragoon. For this, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to a good friend of mine, Hope. Hope is a Dragoon mentor in The Balance, a community hub for theory crafting, guides, and discussion about Final Fantasy XIV. Take it away. Thanks, whoops. To talk about gear and food, we should briefly discuss stats. I'll be simplifying a bit, but here's the main gist of it. As a Dragoon, all pieces of gear we get will have four different stats. Two of these stats, Strength and Vitality, are main stats. Strength scales our damage, and Vitality gives us more HP. The other two are substats, chosen from four possibilities, which are Critical Hit, Determination, Direct Hit, and Skill Speed. I've conveniently placed these in our general order of priority for you. Just remember, it can change in the future. The amount of both main and substats go up with the gear's item level. This is why it's important to wear the highest item level piece while gearing up. Additionally, gear can be melded with materia, which add a small amount of a substat of your choice to the piece you meld. While you can meld any substat to any piece of gear, remember that there is a substat cap on the piece which depends on its item level. This means, for example, that you can't meld more of the main substat a piece already has since it's capped to start with. Food are consumable items that boost vitality and two of the four substats, depending on the food you pick, for 30 minutes. One more very small and very expensive measure you can do if you really want to push the DPS to its max is using tinctures during pools. They last 30 seconds, have a 4 minute and 30 second cooldown, and boost your main stat, thus damage, for the duration. For Dragoon and other strength-based DPS, make sure to use the highest grade tincture of strength available. By combining gear choices, melds, food, and the power of math, we come to what are known as the best in slot sets. These will use precisely calculated amounts of stats to give you the highest damage output possible and are what you work towards as you gear up. You can find these and many other useful resources on the Balance Discord server. That's all for gear, food, and tinctures. Thanks again, whoops. Back to you. Thanks a ton, Hope. Hopefully, that information will serve you aspiring Dragoon mains well. Next up, I've got my good friend Soviet Hammer here, who was kind enough to record a miniature guide of his own that I'd like to share with you all. Soviet, in my opinion, is the current best Dragoon player in the world. 
He'll be discussing some general improvement tips along with his breakdown for a very important aspect for Dragoon players in Endwalker, Burst Windows. Just a bit of a warning, he will be showing footage from a very important story mode trial. If you don't want to see that, now's your chance to skip ahead. Go ahead, Soviet. So, you pick DRG. Some of the coolest looking armor in the game, wielding some of the most iconic spears, and fighting from the skies. Now how do you be a good DPS for your teammates? Put that high jump and gears go on cooldown. What's up guys, my name is Soviet Hammer, fellow DRG enthusiast and a lifelong Dragoon main. I've been playing this class honestly way too long, but I love it. The aesthetic is beautiful and the gameplay is just sharp. Let's talk a little bit about Endwalker Dragoon versus his predecessor in Shadowbringers. Since our personal buff lance charge went from 90 seconds to 60 seconds, and Battle Litany our raid buff went from 3 minute to a 2 minute, the rotation feels pretty intuitive and natural. As long as you're not drifting your high jumps and gear scoggles too far from one another and using them on cooldown, your life windows should fall under buffs in the 1 minute and 2 minute windows. I have one specific example of DRG optimization that I'd like to share with you, but before that, this video has a lot of the core fundamentals of Dragoon. The rotation, when to use things, why they're used, and just general do's and don'ts of the class. It's important that you understand these before thinking about any further optimization. One piece of advice I can give is to split your training and play into segments. First, practice your rotation on a dummy until it feels fluid and comfortable for you. When you're feeling confident there, take it into a boss fight. Practice the rotation with the mechanics. Don't worry too much about the positionals. If you can get them, great. If not, it's no big deal. The most important thing is your rotation and keeping your GCD rolling. Second, work on your burst windows. Endwalker Dragoon, with two charges of Spine Shatter Dive and two charges of Life Surge, make for some pretty interesting and very busy burst windows. These are really important to sequence correctly because it ensures you get the maximum amount of potency under your buffs along with raid buffs. Think of it like a pianist, a piano player in an orchestra. Any wrong key press and the sound's just a bit off. You want to make sure all those presses are fluid and every input maximizes your damage to the fullest. And third, once you've locked all that down, you've got your rotation, you've got your burst windows feeling good, bring in the positionals. It's much easier to worry about positionals and have the headspace to think about them when the other two prerequisites start feeling like second nature. If you try to do all three at once, chances are you're going to have a bad time. Disclaimer, spoilers ahead. If you haven't done the Zodiac fight and you want to do it blind, consider skipping past this part of the video and coming back at a different time. This fight for me was really fun to optimize on Dragoon, mainly because of the spinning platforms. So right around two minutes you have this burst window coming up with a lot of jumps coming up off the cooldown, and if you don't use those jumps, when the mechanic locks you in, you'll have to wait three GCDs before those jumps are actually able to be used again. Now this plays a huge role in drifting a lot of your high jumps and life windows out of raid buffs later down the line, as well as out of this burst window. For the Zodiac opener, there's just one small change. I start with True Thrust into Disembowel, Lance Charge plus Dragon Sight, Chaotic Spring, Litany, Wheeling Thrust, High Jump plus Life Surge into the fifth tier Fang and Claw. I move High Jump one GCD earlier in the rotation and use it on CD every time after that to ensure that I'm able to use a High Jump and Spine Shatter Dive into buffs before the platform locks me into place. If we have successfully moved our high jump in the opener and used it on CD every time after that, we should be coming into our 2 minute burst looking something like this. We'll hit Disembowel into a Lance Charge plus Dragon Sight, Chaotic Spring, Litany plus High Jump, Wheeling Thrust into a Spine Shatter plus Wormwind Thrust. And then at this point you should be locked in with no more jumps available. Into a Life Window, we'll use our Raiden Thrust plus Mirage into a Vorpal Thrust, and then we will prep the Life Surge and trust that we will get unlocked on the Dragonfire, use it, Heaven's Thrust, into a Star Diver, and then our buffs are falling off, we do our fourth tier Life Surge double weave with a Nastrond, and finishing it off with a fifth tier wheeling, and our buffs fall off. Now, I don't claim that this is the most optimal down to the decimal way to burst, however, I've ran this fight a numerous amount of times with a wide variety of comps. It seems to help solve a lot of the issues that Dragoon deals with in this fight, as far as fitting all the jumps under our buffs, as well as all the off GCDs that we have available in this buff window. Another thing to note is that this burst window has a lot of double weaves. Double weave simply refers to pressing two off GCDs between GCD windows. Because some of these off GCDs are jumps, which have a longer animation lock, you may run into the issue of clipping between GCDs. Ultimately, even with the small clips you see in the video example, I still think it's worth setting up the burst this way as it allows us to use all of our jumps and off GCDs appropriately under buffs given the 3 second GCD lock we received from using our jumps during the platform turning. 
If nothing more, I wanted to share with you guys a different variation of a Dragoon Burst window when presented with a specific problem like we are in Zodiac. Maybe in the future we see these mechanics again, and if we do in the normal Savage and Beyond tiers, at least we have an idea of how to tackle them. My overall impression of Dragoon and Endwalker is that it's a pretty fun class to play. I mean, it's my main. I started out playing this game that way, so maybe I'm biased, but I always genuinely just enjoy optimizing the class in the current fights, and I'm sure I will in the fights to come, and I hope that you guys do too. I wish you guys the best of luck in the normal and savage tiers coming out. Good luck to your statics, and, well, I think you've had your fill of me. Peace! Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, uh, don't mind me, just taking some notes of my own here. Thanks, Soviet, for that. By the way, I've left links in the description of this video to all of the people involved in helping create this guide, as well as some great resources for all of your Dragoon needs. Please be sure to check those out. Also, I want to give a huge thank you to my editor, Jill. She did an absolutely fantastic job editing this guide together and dealing with my ramblings. I'll let her put whatever she wants on screen now, but please, everyone, make sure you tell Jill thank you if you enjoyed the guide. Thanks for watching my Dragoon Guide. I hope I helped you understand the job a little bit better. Now I'm going to leave off the end of this video with an opener and rotation to give you an example of what it's going to look like. Just remember, this rotation is on a dummy. It's in a vacuum. Fights and encounters change all the time, so you'll basically never get to do exactly this. But this is the ideal rotation. Again, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or concerns, please do leave them down in the comment section, shoot me a tweet, or come say hi in my live stream, twitch.tv slash whoops, where I will probably be raiding on Dragoon. I'll see you guys later.